Schneiderman. Does whatever a spider can. Look out. Here comes Schneiderman. G'day Saints fans, welcome back to another episode of Snyder Man's Web. Uh, today we've got the great man Tom Simpkin with us. Welcome, thank you for joining us Tom. Thanks mate, thanks for having me. Um, now Tom, we put you to a vote against all the other Toms and um, we got over 10,000 votes and you got over 5,500 votes. So I want to know, how many times did you vote? Because I know you love the internet and you're on the bit, so how many times did you click on yourself? I swear, I never voted for myself. Um, I voted all my votes for Tommy Curran. I thought he deserved to be ahead of me. And how many is that? Oh, there's a lot. Oh, I went hard on it last night to try and avoid this. <laughs> Don't be scared, mate. It's all a bit of fun. Um, right, I've got a couple of questions from the fans. The first one's from Chris Rodriguez, but I'm going to hold that for you, mate, and use it later in the episode because I've got a bit of dirt on his head. So we'll continue with that. Uh, one from Alex Emery. I want to know if him and Dylan Robin are going to form an 80s band. Hashtag big hair. Can you elaborate? Yeah, well, uh, Dylan sort of copied me since he's came down from Freo. So, you know, me and him, they get pretty confused though, out in the field, I think the commentators. So me and him should start up something, I reckon. It'd be pretty good. And Dean Anderson wants to know, when was your last haircut? My last haircut? Um, <laughs> I get it thinned <laughs> every now and again because my hair's so thick. Sorry, can you explain that, please? We I know the females might know what you're talking about, yeah, but guys... Get thinning scissors. <laughs> So I go down to me, uh, live in Hampton Street, so I go down to my local uh, barber and he just thins it out every now and again so it doesn't get so thick and buffy. <laughs> I'm due for another one. <laughs> I'll head there before the beano. <laughs> so I do actually cut my hair. Are you a female? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate, a couple of photos here, just of you when you, you started. Jeez. You had no hair and then you let it grow and then you got a beard and everything else. Please explain the first one for us and then look where you are now. Yeah, obviously back down to the uh, Geelong Falcons. Good days. Um, I don't know what's going on with me here. I think that's the haircut I got the head from because it's so spiky up the top. Um, the, the next one is just, I don't know, it's terrible. I've just gone away from that, the short sides and then on top. And now then, you're pretty happy with the last one? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I sort of like the long hair. Girlfriend likes a long hair, so stick with it. All right, mate, you're a country boy from Colac. Give us a bit of uh, where you grew up and who, who else grew up in the same town as you. Yeah, mate, obviously from Colac, a uh, small country town, about 45 minutes past Geelong, about, population about 10,000. Um, Luke Hodge down there, uh, Amon Buchanan, Nathan Foley, so a few good names come out of there. Yep, and you also got a brother that plays in the AFL. Have you played against him and, and who does he play for? Yeah, when he was at the Cats, he, uh, I played against him last year. I um, don't know what round it was, it was late in the year, on a Friday night, so that was a good experience for the family, everyone came down. He was a sub, he only played about 20 minutes, he had more touches than me, and I played the, <laughs> and I played the whole game, so cut with a slack for that. But um, now he's gone over the Hawks, so, and he's having a pretty good year, so happy for him. Uh, good stuff, and you played on uh, Jonathan Brown the other week, and uh, I hear you, you're pretty happy about it, because you kept him to two touches. Yeah, well, obviously, he's a star of the competition, so if you can hold Brandon two touches, pretty happy. No. Not bad for five minutes a game of footy you played. <laughs> obviously, yeah, it's pretty shattered for him to go down, but no, I was quite, quite happy. And you are a bit of a mad dog in the footy field. You're one of the blokes we love to play with who just doesn't got no respect for your body. Um, and on, the week, on that week, I think it was, you, you copped a corky, just an old-fashioned corky. And then on Tuesday, you're in hospital and you're out for the rest of the year. Can you explain? Yeah, um, pretty severe cork in the lower leg. Um, didn't think much of it, just couldn't really, I was in a lot of pain, but then something happened, the compartments, everything all got inflamed and it had to be released, so pretty much got my whole left side of my leg opened up to release all the pressure and let the blood flow out and just, yeah, get out of pain pretty much. That's put me out for the rest of the year, so it's disappointing. It is, mate. Now, the boys, uh, they, what's your middle name for a start? Daniel. Daniel, okay. The boys wanted to change it to Winger. Uh, you've got a bad reputation of being a Winger. Um, and also, even the docs, when you said you had a corky, they sort of laughed at you and said, come on, mate, you'll be right, it's just a corky. Um, why do you win so much, buddy, and how did you get the name? Um, this all comes from my first year. It's, uh, I didn't get a lot of leeway being a rookie my first year, and you know, I might have complained a bit to the physios, <laughs> getting shafted a lot to earlier times when I was in first, little things like that, so... I learned along the way, you just need to shut your mouth, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I've learnt I've my lesson. Uh, took you a while, but well done. 
Now, mate, I believe uh, there's a bit of a story when you were younger, you had a bike accident. Yeah. Can you explain that to everyone out there, in case you don't know? No, oh, um, I was about five years old and I was racing Jonathan, my older brother, in a bike race. And um, first time ever I was winning and I was so happy and I was almost, we were almost home and I just couldn't stop laughing looking back. We're on the side of the road and we're almost home and then I've just gone straight into the back of a park ute and smashed all my face. Went face first, two fractures in my jaw, couldn't eat for four weeks. So, so it was happy and then smashed all my face. That is good, I like that. Uh, back in your younger days, I found another photo of you, mate. Just to show everyone out there what, what you actually look like when you're a kid. Cute looking kid. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. What year is that? that Year 10, I think, down Trinity College in Colac. Um, that's the buff head I'm talking about. That's my thick hair. That's why I get it thinned now. <laughs> <laughs> Look how thick it is. It's terrible. And my fake smile. Look how terrible that is. Look how big your head is. Yeah, it's huge. No wonder. Now, I, uh, I wanted to actually measure your head for everyone out there. So I brought along a tape measure. Yeah, we'll just quickly give it a measure, mate. Is that all right? That's fine. You can do it yourself. Tell me what it is and I'll... Uh... It is above, uh, above average. We, uh, we had a bit of a measure off with you and Bo, Bo Maester one time, and I think you come out on top with the biggest head at the club, so we'll just measure it for everyone out there. From the, this way? Can you grab that? <laughs> Don't think this is going to work, is it? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at 28 centimetres around. Oh, that's pretty big. <laughs> so, it's actually not that big. <laughs> well, it is. We just proved it that big, so big Bo, head. Bowie's got a massive head. Not as big as yours, mate. Now, another question. You do play on some big, you know, big power forwards and Jonathan Brown and, and all that, and you're not actually overly tall compared to them. And there's a bit of room. One of the boys said after one of the games, played on Jack Raywell who kicked six on you and you come in and started crying. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> kicked eight on me in, uh, in front of 50,000 at the Dome on a Friday night. It was uh, <laughs> so in my 10th game and um, I copped a lot of... So oh, I can't swear. Copped a lot of it out in the field that night. You know, I had like four possessions and you know, we lost the game and I couldn't control myself and, yeah, went to the toilet and just sort of started crying. I don't know why, I just couldn't... And then I can't remember who saw me. It might have been Neil or Gilbo. And I couldn't... I don't know what happened, but, yes, it is true. Oh, that's great. I didn't even know that was true, but now I'm happy it is. You're also known around one of the boys as being one of the biggest tight asses. Uh, you and David Armitage. Um, now, is that extended from your young days on the rookie wage, or what is it? It definitely is. Um, first year, being a rookie out of the country, I was on about 30000 a year, and then my manager put me on a tight budget of about one fifty a week, and uh, so he controlled all my money, and that happened for about three years, and then bumped up to about 200 and then 250 a week. But obviously had no money, so, and that included fuel and shopping and all that, so, <laughs> so obviously... You can't live on that in Melbourne, so I used to ask the boys for a bit of money because my manager wouldn't give me any sometimes, but uh, yeah, that's where it's all stemmed from, but I'm not really tight ass. Does your manager still control your money? No, nah, I took over last year. How old are you now? Just turned 23. That's good. Good to hear. Also, another story when you were a kid, mate. Um, I got this from Jonathan, your brother. Did you? you don't even look. You'll be right. Apparently, you used to go to the toilet naked all the time and just sit there for a good 15, 20 minutes. Any truth to that? <laughs> yeah. When I'm drunk. Um... I had this thing growing up. I went to the toilet. I had to be naked. So it's weird. It's a weird thing. And yes, it is true. I had to strip my clothes off and be fully naked. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me we can use that. Now, um, also another little phobia you've got, I've noticed, you've told me in the past, is um, you have to lock every door in your house, every car door. You, you'll freak out if you go inside and the car door's not locked. You'll have to go outside and do it. What, what does it go with that? Yeah, it's weird. Um, we, got, we got robbed when I was young, and I reckon it's all stemmed from that. I was about eight, and our house got robbed. And ever since then, my car, my phone, my wallet, I've just got to make sure when I'm asleep, phone, wallet, keys, and I've got to make sure my car's locked. If I have the slightest doubt that it's not, straight down the check it, that it is. So It's weird, but you know, I don't lose anything, and my car's always locked. <laughs> Uh, and you lived with Gilbo for a few years. Uh, any stories or excitement about that period of your time, yeah. period of your life? Yeah, Gilbo, you know, he's a, you know, he's a well-known player in the AFL, you know, a big-name player for this club. And we probably lived in the worst house in Melbourne. And uh, it was an absolute dump. He did not. Cheap? Very cheap. We Tied both us. rented. We both rented. 
So, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't have a lot of money, so I moved in <laughs> and it was horrendous. It was the worst. There was no heating, no heating and cooling. So in the winter, we literally ha just had blankets. This is with Sam Gilbert. Terrible, terrible. And in the, in the summer, we literally sweated every night, couldn't sleep. It was horrendous. You used horrendous a few times then, so we weren't happy with it. Uh, what's a pet hate you got that you really bugs you? I hate... Uh, going on away trips and you got to share a room. I can't stand sleeping next to someone in another bed with them, tossing and turning, snoring. Jordan Stay is a good example. In Colorado, love to sleep talk and love to just move around, toss and turn. It just drives me nuts. You still go to the toilet naked if you got a roommate? <laughs> uh, <laughs> believe it or not, some, sometimes I do. It's it's. Uh, yeah. Uh, Only when I was in. This happened when I was like five. This is when I was like five or six. That's fine, mate. Righto, mate, to finish off, uh, you've been pretty good. I uh, just got a couple of spelling challenges for you. I know you're not the smartest kid going around, so uh, can you spell Kazitsky for me? Kazitsky. Uh, K O S C H I T Z E. Oh, very close, buddy, but unlucky, mate. You missed the Z K E. Z K E. Pretty good for you. Now, spell the skipper, Nick Rewalt. Yeah, R-I-E-W-O-L-D-T. Well done, that's a tick. Now, last one, spell Schneiderman. <laughs> Schneiderman? <laughs> Don't get this wrong. C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R-M-A-N. Well done, Tom Simpkin, very smart. Mate, there you have it, Saints fans. Uh, Tom Simpkin, thanks for joining us, buddy. You did well. All right, there we go, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, as I said, as we usually do, we're going to give Tom the option. Who do you reckon we should vote for next week? Um, we'll get another backman in. I reckon we'll get uh, Jimmy Gwilt. I reckon he'll be all right. Beautiful. There it is. Big James Gwilt next week. So during the week, we'll put up James Gwilt and you guys can send through your questions. So till then, go to the Saints and see you next week. Schneider Man. Schneider Man. Does whatever a spider can. Look out. Here comes Schneider Man.